Hey folks, welcome to Wednesday night. Good night to be alive in the, in the Lord, amen? Amen, I'm excited, I don't know about you, but I'm excited about what God's doing on the earth today. We hear about all this woke generation, this council culture, but it, Jesus is still, still doing mighty things upon the earth. And I pray that he's doing mighty things in your life. In fact, you need to tell yourself, he's, he, he's not only my savior, he's my provider, he's my healer, he's everything I need him to be. So that will, that will stir you up a little bit. And that's what Paul told Timothy. I just We had a prayer meeting at noon today, and, and we got to talking about uh, all the stuff that's going on. But God has not given us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. And it's hap good things happening right here at Living Word Family Church. We, our prayer meetings are uh, exciting. We're praying for things for the nation, for, for the church family, and, and we're seeing things happen. I pray that you have your expectancy out when you pray that the good things are happening in your life and those around you. In Jesus' name, amen. And Sunday morning was a great service. Hallelujah. People getting healed, set free. A good, a great word about us being ministers. How many of you know you're a minister out there, right here? And you and I are ministers of reconciliation. That's what the scripture says. So we have a duty and we have a calling. And so uh, I don't know where you're at in life today, but wherever you're at, you got breath in your life, you got something to do. Amen? Amen. Well, let me get over to what we're going to talk about tonight. We've been talking for weeks now about the established heart. And why I talk about that, because if your heart's not fixed, if your heart's not set on the things that God can and will do and has done and for your life, for all of us, he's already appropriated everything we need to life and godliness through Christ Jesus. But if it's not fixed, you'll be wishy-washy. you would be up and down. you would be upset. You can be get depressed. You can get discouraged. You can get in despair sometimes. But we have to know he's done great things. And, and the psalmist even wrote that. He said, blessed is the man who fears the Lord because uh, he'll be fortunate and prosperous and things will happen to his benefit. You know, when we praise the Lord, you know, I've said this many times, you probably heard me say, praise drives back the enemy. Isn't that true? When you begin to think about his goodness, when you begin to praise him, when you begin to magnify him, the problems don't seem so big. That's what David said in Psalm 34, oh, magnify the Lord with me. That was when he was running from somebody that was trying to kill him. <laughs> he said, I'll bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord in the next verse down and he delivered me from all my fears. You got fear tonight over what's going on in the world, what's going on in your family, what's going on in your finances, what's going on in your health? Begin to praise the Lord. It makes the enemy push back and then you can hear the voice of the Lord and you can walk in the power of God, amen? So we have to have our heart fixed. And, and so we've talked about many things. I've got, uh, we talked about, it's about your heart. It's a, a firm foundation. A, what do you set up on? In Christ realities, all of those things we've talked about. And tonight I'm just going to review just for a moment the seven major revelations of which every believer should be established. Now this, this part of this came from uh, uh, Brother Jerry Seville. And I would encourage you, there's a lot of good uh, pastors and preachers out there that you can listen to that, that will encourage you. Not only here at church, you need to be listening. Find somebody that it's like precious faith with us, with, with what is taught here. So you can uh, expand your knowledge of what's going on and, and, and what the word says, amen? But it talks about the first one was a reality of redemption. How many of you know you've been redeemed, bought back, paid with a price, amen? And that's, that's in, over in Hebrews 9, 11, and 12. You can read some of these scriptures. And then the reality of the new birth. Jesus said, you must be born again. We've been, when we accepted Christ, the old man has passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You're a new creature in Christ Jesus. And that's, you got to have a reality of that. Because a lot of people, what the enemy will try to do is use your past to keep you from going forward in Christ. So remember this, I've been born again. I've been set free from my old life. Now, there'll be people who might come around and say, oh, I know you, you used to do such and Haven't you heard? That old person died, I'm brand new in the things of God. And then over in uh, uh, reality of re righteousness, 
How many of you know you're not an old sinner saved by grace? You now become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. If you don't know that, you can be caught off guard. You can say, well, I'm, not, I'm just an old worm. I'm no good. No, you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And that was brought about by nothing you did except to receive the gift that he gave us through his death, burial, and resurrection. It goes on to say another reality is a being God indwelled. Christ in us has now become the hope of glory. In 1 John 4, 4, it says, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Isn't that good news tonight? Hallelujah. Think on these things. That's what Paul said over in Philippians. He's think on these things. If you want to get over worry, anxiety, fear, and all that stuff, think on these things. Think on who you are in Christ, that God dwells on the inside of you. Oh, hallelujah. That'll stir you right there. The Holy Ghost, the Spirit of the living God lives on the inside of me. You ought to say that. The Holy Spirit lives on the inside of me. That'll, that'll, that'll get you going. The reality of the integrity of God's Word. Hallelujah. It's not, this is not just a book. It's God's Word. It's the truth. There are so many voices in the world today. I hope you're not getting what you think is your truth off of Facebook and, and social media. There, there are prophets of doom on these things. They'll, they'll drag you away. A little leaven, the Bible says, will leaven the whole lump. That's what Jesus said. In other words, a little, uh, you know, I was thinking about when, when, what you do to, to kill rodents and kill different things. You know what? They don't, the whole thing isn't filled with poison. It, it, it's something that tastes good and it, it draws in there, but it has a little bit of poison in there just enough to do away with those things that you, they want to, you want to get rid of, and especially in the wintertime now, when mice and stuff try to come in your house and stuff. You put out, uh, uh, what was it, Decon used to be the big, big seller. Well, it's not, it has something that draws their attraction. How many of you know a little leaven, a little poison, uh, little things that get you off the truth can sway you and cause you to have doubt and unbelief when, it, when a serious time in your life comes. Amen. But tonight I want to talk about the reality of the authority in the name of Jesus. How many of you know we have authority? Hallelujah. Philippians uh, 2, 9 through 11 says, whereby God has also highly exalted us and given him, given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. How many of you know we have a name? Jesus' name can, <laughs> it says, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. We have that name, but we also have in that name, we have his authority. You know, over in Ephesians 6, 12, we read uh, over in Ephesians when Paul was talking about putting on the whole armor of God and being strong in the Lord and the power of his might. It says right in the midst of that, we, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. How many of you know your neighbor, your wife, your husband, your kids, these people might be doing things that you don't like. How many of you know we're not wrestling against that? We're not wrestling against people. As much as I'd like to say some of the politicians, I, you know, but it's a demonic force of darkness, which is in the nation and in the world. So we better, we better know what we're fighting against. But it says, but against principalities, against powers, the rulers of darkness of the world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Thank God we have authority. Jesus has given us authority. Our combat with the devil is always, we should always be reminded and be conscious of the fact that it, we have authority over him because of what Jesus has done. Now, over in Ephesians 1, 3, it says this, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. In the NAS, it says every spiritual blessing has been given to us. And authority is part of the blessing. Do you know that? Authority is part of the blessing. In Matthew 28, <laughs> And we know this scripture, 28, 18, Jesus said, all authority has been given unto me in heaven and in earth. And then he turned around in verse 19, which is, is he said, go therefore and make disciples of all the nations. How, what, what would he do if he had authority and he's telling the body, which we are the body to go out. Do you not think he didn't give us authority to go out? 
or he's just going to send us out as uh, you know with no power no authority no uh, authority is what you can stand it's like a police officer that stands in the middle of the street you've heard this before he said i remember <laughs> i remember years ago when i was in the navy we were in hong kong now i've seen uh, and sometimes in big cities like that but they would stand on a platform right out in the middle of a busy intersections and, and he would direct traffic one way and this way and that way. Why do you think people did that? Because he had a badge on. He had the authority backing him all the way up. And that's what, when we, when we take our authority and begin to walk in our authority, we have all of heaven backing us up. Come on, you know that's true. Amen? So it's important that we know that we have authority. And so in Mark 16, I, I, I just want to look at this uh, real quick. You know this, what it says. Jesus said this in Mark 16. Says, uh, he said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Every creature meaning every person in, within your domain, your world. Amen. Goes on to say he believes in, in his baptized will be saved. He who does not will, believe will be condemned. He didn't say he that it was not baptized. He that does not believe. Amen. Sometimes we confuse that. Thinking we have to get, you know, it's it's an ordinance we should follow is getting baptized. But that isn't what saves us. It's the blood of Jesus and accepting him. It goes on to say, and these signs will follow those who believe. If you're a believer tonight, here it is. In my name. <laughs> the authority is in his name. Amen. So we say, in, in my name, he said, they will cast out demons. How many of you know there's demons in the world today? We got to know this. We can't, well, I wish that wouldn't happen. You know, that such and such is hurting my feelings. And he did this. It's a demonic force of darkness trying to keep division and uh, uh, within, even within the church. Amen? Come on now. We have authority. It says, in my name, they will, and they'll uh, cast out demons and they'll speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. How do they do that? In my name. In my name. It goes on to say, so when they, after that, the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and set down at the right hand of God. Now he said, he left, but he, did, he left his name with us. Amen. He left his name, and they went out, preached everywhere, the Lord working with them, and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. Amen. So what did they do? They went out and preached in the name of Jesus. Amen. That's what I, preachers need to begin to preach the good news in the name. Because that's what puts people over. Amen. And then in, uh, that was the great commission. But he gave authority in my name. Go ahead and be used by name. Where you go? And then in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, he says, you shall receive power. Now, there's a difference between authority and power. Uh, that, uh, that police officer has authority, but he also can use, needs power to arrest people and do the things he needs to do in his job. But you shall receive power af uh, after the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me. I mean, you know, it's not really easy to witness about the kingdom of God without the power of the Holy Ghost. That, that's why we mess up sometimes. We're, we should be so filled with the power of the Holy Spirit overflow that it's flowing out of us. This, we don't have to try to conjure it up. We don't have to try to talk about Jesus and, and make it sound good. We have to have it in us and let it just bubble out of us. Amen? In my name. Then over in Luke 9, this is back before, the, the bat, uh, before his ascension, before his crucifixion. In Luke 9, he says this to his disciples. This is, this is vitally to know, vital to know these things. Then he called the 12 disciples together and gave them what? Power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and heal the sick. Wow. Power and you think he's given that up? Oh, well, I don't, I've, the last apostle died. You don't have that anymore. No. Every Christian that's born again has power and authority to, to cast out devils and heal the sick. Now, I will say, if you've been baptized when they, when they were waiting in the upper room for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it's important to be baptized in the Spirit because more than likely you won't even try and you won't even hear what the Spirit is saying to you. 
If you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, praying in the Holy Spirit, praying in tongues, being led by the Spirit of God, you, can, you have power and authority over the power of the enemy. Amen? So this is important to know. This is part of that, in having the established heart. In Luke 10, 17, it says, you've heard this before, and I'll just go over there because it's real close. In Luke 10, 17, he, had just, he sent out the 70 to, to do the, what he had just said in act, uh, Luke chapter 9, power and authority, go out and, and, and heal the sick and cast out devils. And in, in verse 17 of Luke 10, it says, Then the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. There it is. The authority was in his name. And they came back rejoicing, <laughs> excited. How many of you know when you cast out a devil, you set somebody free, it should excite you. We should. There, there are demonic forces attacking our, our population, our world today, right here in America. Oh, no, that can't happen in America. All you got to do is turn five minutes of the news on, even the local news, and hear about young people killing each other at an enormous rate, crime that's in, uh, throughout our nation. Such diabolical things are happening that we never thought about of 30, 20, 30 years ago. They're happening now. Well, tell me there's not demons. But anyway, he goes on to say, and he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. And in verse 19, behold, I give you authority to trample on, all, on serpents and scorpions and all the, all, all the power, not just a little of the power of the enemy, all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Hallelujah. I don't know where you're at tonight, what you think about. If, you have, if you've been born again, you have authority and the power of the Holy Ghost holding back the scorpions and serpents. Amen? What is that? Uh, in in uh, rendering of that, scorpions and serpents are, are symbols of spiritual enemies and demonic power over which Jesus has given his followers the power to overcome. Amen? Amen. We have authority over the power of darkness in what? In Jesus' name. Now, the thing of it is, too, you got to go on and think about, do I know Jesus? Because you know that, 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 that scripture where the seven sons of Sceva, this gets, came to me, I was in my notes, but the seven sons of Sceva tried to cast out the demon out, uh, out of that person. And it said, in the name of Paul, whom we know, and Jesus, whom we know, uh, and it couldn't get it done. Why? Because they didn't know Jesus for themselves. They didn't know about the power. And, that, and they got overcome and overpowered by that, uh, that, that seven sons of Sceva got beat up and, and hurt pretty bad, you know. So, but we have power over what? Sin, sickness, poverty, perversion, and all the power of the enemy. That's what he says. I give you power over all the power of the enemy. Now, I'm going to turn over to Romans chapter 8. I think I read this last week. I can't remember. You know, it's been since I slept since then, a night or two. And in Romans chapter 8, I want to bring this about because this is uh, in verse 31. Now, when things coming against you, against you in the world, and all the things that are coming against our nation and around our world, you got to know there's power in your, in your life to overcome. Power in your life to overcome uh, things that are coming against you. But it says, what then, what shall we say to these things? If God is for us, say that with me tonight. God is for me. And if he be for me, who can be against me? That's good news right there. If he's for me, why are we so worried about all this other stuff going on in the world? He did, who not, did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for all, us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? Is it God who justifies? Who is it who, he who condemns? Is it Christ who died and furthermore is also risen? Who is even at the right hand of God who makes intercession for us? I said it before. He's praying for us. He's praying for you tonight. That what? That you'll stand strong against the wiles of the enemy to walk in the authority that he's given you and in the power that he's put upon your life. Amen. Who can separate us from the love of Christ? 
shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things, we are more than what? Conquerors through him who loved us. How many of you know that's important? We are more than conquerors. Amen. More than, not just a conqueror, but more than for what, for, from what he has done for us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, or nor things uh, present or things to come, nor height or depth or any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. How many of you know that's so important that, that we are, cannot be separated? We are in a place as conquerors. Amen. What should our attitude be if I know that I'm more than a conqueror, that Jesus paid a dear, dear price? Should we live cowardly? Should we yield to the, uh, to the forces of darkness or the devil? No, we shouldn't do that at all. No, 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 not at all. We should arise in the name that's above every name, the name of Jesus, and take our place as sons and daughters of the Most High God. Amen? Amen. In Jesus' name, we are to run off the devil. Now, I would say this. What are you speaking to? What are the things you need to speak to tonight? Faith is alive where? In your heart and in your mouth. If you're not opening your mouth, you could, you could run the devil off. I heard a guy say one time, you could run the devil off just speaking the Beatitudes if you take your stance right. <laughs> say, get out in Jesus' name. You ever talk to yourself? You ever talk to your body? You ever talk to your, uh, your attitude? You know, attitude's a big deal. There's an attitude of faith, you know? Well, I don't know. I just better get the pastor. No, you speak to that thing in your life. Tell your body to line up with the word of God that by his stripes you've been healed. Amen? Begin to speak to your circumstances. Speak to your finances. Speak to your body. Speak to your, uh, uh, the problems. In the name of Jesus, break the power of the devil. Pray over your kids, pray over your grandkids, pray over your spouse your, and, and say, Lord, I thank you and praise you that, hey, right now we come against the powers of darkness that are trying to infiltrate our family and our whatever it might be at that time and say, God, I thank you that you've delivered us. Now, why do I say all that? Because he expects us to say that. I'm gonna read uh, the very uh, scripture that you know so well in Mark 11, 23 and 24, Jesus had just uh, had cursed the uh, fig tree, right? And the, and the disciples were amazed. How could this happen? Well, it's because I was God and you're not. No, he didn't say that at all. What did he say? Have faith in God. What do you have faith in? You have faith in his word, that his word is true. What he said you can do, you can do. Amen? Amen. So then he says, for assuredly I say to you, whosoever so say unto this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things which he says will be done, he'll have whatsoever he says. So you can have what you say, but we use the name of Jesus. Amen? That name that's above every name. That name that's, <laughs> will last forever. Hallelujah, I'm telling you, this is so important and vital in the day and hour we live in. Everybody has circumstances. Everybody has problems. We're, hey, listen, we're in, it, it, uh, we're in a, a fallen world and things have a way of touching us all. But we can overcome. How do we overcome? I'm an overcomer by the blood of the Lamb and the word of my testimony. And if Jesus and God be for me, who can be against me? Now get out, devil, and go on down the road. I've got time to mess with you. I've got things to do for the kingdom. Amen? Amen. Therefore, I say to you, whatsoever you ask, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. What are you praying about and believing you're going to have? Amen. Stir yourself up. That's what Paul told Timothy. I, did, I don't know if I mentioned that early on, but he, we haven't been given a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. So this week, I want you to center up on that. My heart is fixed. Say that with me. My heart is fixed. I have the mind of Christ. You know, sometimes we have to go around saying, I'll never lose my mind. I always have a clear mind. I can remember things. You know, sometimes we have to say what God says. I tell people sometimes, uh, 
get get the messages that Pastor Scott preaches or what I'm talking about tonight. Get on, get somebody that you really, I mean, I'm a, a big uh, Keith Moore fan and I'm uh, some other people, you know, that I love to hear from. But I'm telling you, get those messages. You know what? You don't have to be a, a Bible scholar. All you have to do is follow what they say. I love Keith because he just comes out and says that he, he has little confessions during his sermons many times. And I just say I'm with him. And now I just go around, you know, he, he got me onto this saying, I'll never lose my mind. I'm not going to lose my mind. Listen, you don't need to lose your mind. Well, I'm getting a little older now. I'm about 55, 60 years old. You know how it is when you get a little older, you don't remember things. No, shut up, devil. I remember I had the mind of Christ. I don't know, I'm talking to somebody tonight. You need to be talking to yourself in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I've got to get off here. My trusty director is telling me my time's about up. Someday I'll get on here and go for about two hours, and I'll let him go for a break while I'm running this thing. But uh, no, but praise God. I'm glad you're tuned in tonight. Be encouraged. God is still on the throne. He's doing great, mighty things, and he's not left you out. Amen? Amen. Father, we thank you. I thank you so much that you've given us a name, <laughs> your son Jesus, a name that's above every name, that paid a dear, dear price for our salvation, that paid a dear price that we can walk in the fullness of God, that we can walk in power and authority, that we can have boldness in this day of adversity and know that <laughs> if you be for us, who can be against us? I pray for everyone that the sound of my voice will get a hold of the message of God, that it's a true saying that if God be for us, hallelujah, who can be against us? And we just give you all the praise for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. See you next time. Be blessed.